this is our kind of lean shoulder set. Okay, we have a few instruments, right? So there are two different kinds of retrievers. Can you see them clearly? Right. So this one is quite small, and this is for for fiber wire. So small switches like this, right? So you can grab it. It's called a fiber wire retriever. Okay. Perfect. This one is slightly different. You can see it's a little square and has a little barrel in the end. And this is actually much better for using tapes. So tapes can actually get caught in these ones. And so this one is used for retrieving tapes. So it's a fiber tape retriever. Uh -huh. And this one is a fiber wire retriever. Okay? So we'll put those on the side, the gun doors here. Then you have this. There are lots of different kinds of cutters but I tend to use this kind of cutter. And when you want to use this cutter, if you want to have no tails in, then you feed it from the top, like this, and then you cut, okay? If you want a little tail in, then you'll feed it from the bottom and cut. But most people use knotless technology now for most things, so you feed it from the top in most cases. Okay, good. So that's done. That's the cutter done as well. This is the other instrument that we have. It's basically a grasper. All right? Now there are loads of different things that arthritis can make, but we only have four in this, which is pretty much what we need. So we have a grasper for holding on tissue, testing the tension on the calf, grabbing foreign bodies or whatever it is. That's it, right? So four instruments. Two retrievers, one grasper, one cutter. Very straightforward knot pusher. Right, so with a knot pusher, Obviously, you have to look down here. You have to. You can feed your suture through this, yeah. So then you can, if you have knots, you can tie it down here. So there's a knot pusher. Sometimes putting knot down. So this is for a handy instrument. Then here you have two different kinds of suture parting devices. What we don't have is the. Um, the lassos, which are separately packed, but we tend to use two different kinds of uh, suture passing devices. Uh, here, one is for the cuff, and it's called a normal scorpion, right? Okay, there's a new one, which is easier to load. And this is slightly different shape in a slightly smaller mount, so it's easier for smaller places. Like, this is called a labor scorpion. There are loads of different kinds of scorpions, but in the shoulder, we use two. This is for the cuff. This is for the label. And loading it is pretty easy. In these new ones, and old ones used to have a few tricks and you have to make sure the needle goes through properly. But the old and the new ones, you just open up. You slide it in. You don't have to do anything else. And then you just take a little bite of tissue, hopefully with the needle inside. So this one. Didn't have a needle, so I'm going to put the needle in now. And then you'll see I can pass the suture through. Okay. And then it captures the suture as well. So not only passes it, but captures it, and you can release it quite easily. So, similar way, it grabs and captures sutures. You can use the same needle for both, because the same ones, but they're different kinds of scorpions. One for the cuff, and one for the label. Now, let's move on to here. Yeah? So here you have a troker that we use for our push locks. And there are a lot of different kinds, but here you, if you're doing push locks or 2.9 push locks that are used for stabilization, I would normally put down and the drill goes down here, and then you drill the hole and put the anchor down. So this is not a drill, but the drill effectively will go down the same hole as this obturator. So that's for stabilization. But also for stabilizations, you have a few things that are quite helpful. So you have these elevators, slightly different shape, to elevate the label. So you can go in between the glenoid bone and the label and elevate it. And then when you want to freshen things up, you use these rasps. They're pointing different ways, so you can decide which one you want and you can use a rasp. And they're kind of rough on the side freshen up the area. Now I also tend to use shavers and I also tend to use sometimes a bar to freshen it up. Now this is a very versatile instrument. 
Okay, this is called a switching stick. Okay, and this is also a different kind of a switching stick, right? Switching sticks are quite good for actually putting it in and going into the front of the pack. So this is this is for changing the position in the shoulder. A few small other instruments that I don't choose very often, use very often, but this is a hook for retrieving certain things. This is a kind of a hook as well, but it has measures on it. So when you want to use bone loss measurement in the glenoid, you can see how much it is. It's five millimeter increments. This is an awl for the 4.575 solar lock. So 4.75 solar lock, this is the awl. It has two laser markings. And we tend to go to the second laser mark when we are putting the anchors in. So you would put the awl in into the bowl and then you put your silver lock anchor on top. Our uh, shaver module, so the suction goes on the back of it. And I tend to use, uh, again, the many different kinds of shavers, but the two, two different kinds here. This is effectively a barrel burr. It's just been used, so it's got a little bit of tissue on it. And this is a soft tissue shaver. Now again, it comes, comes in lots of different varieties, but I tend to use a straightforward soft tissue shaver for the bursa, etc., debridement. And if you want to cut bone, then this barrel burr is the key. Okay? And they tend to fit in here directly, like that. Right? And then you can just use it by pressing the switch here. Or I, what I tend to do is prefer the pedals because it gives me a little bit more control.